This is the stripped down cocktail kit that any drummer can build right now. The best thing about this setup is that if you already have a cajon, you have everything you need to go ahead and throw together this ultimate cajon drum set. I'll show you how versatile this kit actually is and I'll show you a few important tips for success if you'd like to take this for a spin on a gig yourself. Hey everybody, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer, where we're all about learning the core drumming skills that help you make music faster. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. When I put this kit together, the first thing that I do is I clip my bass drum pedal to that piece of plywood. This is a super important, this is just a random piece of plywood that I cut somewhere years ago, and it's roughly the size of the cajon. Uh, you can get creative with this. You could use a piece of wood, you could use something else, but the idea is have your pedal attached to something that has the weight of the cajon on it so the pedal doesn't move, it's locked in place, just like when you clamp it to your bass drum hoop. I've also got these extra magazines, and again, it doesn't matter what you use for this, that I put on the opposite side, just to balance it out, because the pedal's gonna elevate it a little bit, I wanna make sure that it's roughly level and that helps not put so much stress on the wood too. If you wanted to get fancy, you could cut a piece of wood that's maybe this thick on the back side and this thick on the front side so that it all balances out nicely. Also, you saw in the thumbnail, I was pointing towards that black thing hanging down the middle. That's a really important part of this setup and that's literally just a towel that I have folded over in half and then in half again. So it's a fairly thin towel, but it's, it becomes four layers at that point when I folded it twice. So that just hangs down the front. And that's there because even with a soft beater on the, the bass drum pedal, which is, I've got the Vader Bomber beater on there, which is very soft. But even with that, you get a lot of high-end smack when it hits the cajon. And really, I want to get rid of that because I just want low end. I'm using it as my kick drum. I don't want high end from that pedal. I don't want an annoying smack. And so by putting that towel there, we've got a soft surface for it to hit plus the soft beater. And so it sounds much more similar to your hand hitting it. Where you've got, you know, more meat hitting it so it's a nice thump kind of sound. That works really well. That's an essential part of this. You've gotta have something there that's very soft. You could put additional like socks and stuff on the, the beater and that might work. I'd recommend having the towel there. That works really well. I really like to keep the setup simple and I like, I like things that are simple and also versatile. I like kind of being a, a minimalist a lot of times on gigs that don't require much because I wanna be able to set up quickly, tear down quickly and not complicate things. So I like just doing a snare, and in this setup, I'm, I'm using my piccolo snare, which is great because it's small. It sounds kind of interesting. Um, sometimes I'll use my full-size snare. If I know I'm gonna be playing brushes a lot, I will use my bigger snare just so I've got more room to swish around. But a lot of times I do use the piccolo because it's so small and easy to pack up and lightweight. And then I like using hi-hats. Instead of a ride or a crash, I like to just have the hats because it forces me to think creatively in terms of how I play. Because I can use the, the hats to be a crash, like if I want to play a crash sound, pss, I can do that. I can play splashes with my foot, I can do some sizzles, I can do chicks. Um, I can even throw the tambourine on top, and so it's extremely versatile. And also not having a cymbal off to the side kind of helps me always think quiet. So if I were playing this, this setup in a really small room, and let's say there's people like eating dinner right over there, this whole thing really encourages me to stay quiet and to stay light in my playing. By the way, the djembe is kind of a new addition to the setup. I've only used it on two gigs because I just got it for Christmas, uh, which was like less than a month ago as of the filming of this video. And so it's been kind of cool. I like having that, just an additional surface to play with my hand or reach over. So it's just an extra sound, but you definitely don't have to have a hand drum. You can keep this very simple. I really like the kick snare hat setup. So enough of me talking about it and introducing it. Now I want to play it for you so you can hear how this sounds.
So I mentioned earlier I'd give you some important tips for success uh, as far as using this on gigs. And really a big one, a really big important tip is make sure you're able to mic your cajon. Even if you're playing in a small room, even if it's a very small, intimate kind of setting, if you want any low end at all, you've got to put a mic in there. Otherwise, cajons just don't generate much low end. I mean, the low end is there, but it doesn't resonate much. It doesn't travel far. And so somebody sitting over there won't hear a nice low end tone unless you've got a mic. And actually, uh, with my setup, I don't even use a stand. I set the mic, I go inside the hole in the cajon, set it inside there. I have this thing somewhere back here. This thing that I set the mic on. Wow, I don't even know what this is. Oh, it's like a, I think it's an elephant. Anyways, I got this thing at a white elephant party a couple, yeah. Yeah, this is an elephant, we'll go with elephant, it's an elephant. I got this at a white elephant party, and at some point, um, I was about to throw it away, and I was about to play a gig with my cajon. I thought, oh, you know what? I don't have an extra towel laying around. I'm just gonna put this inside the cajon, sit the mic on it. That way the mic isn't rattling or shaking if it's just sitting on the wood. So this is literally what's lived inside my cajon for years now this goofy looking elephant hat. So the mic sits on it, and so that helps isolate the mic, and it does a great job. That way you don't have to worry about a mic stand. Also, if you're in a larger room and you're doing a lot of brush stuff and shaker stuff, then you might wanna have an overhead mic out front. A lot of times I'll have my Beta 52 inside the cajon, I'll put my overhead out front just to pick up the shaker. Um, that way I don't feel like I'm having to compete with the rest of the band if we are playing at a little bit of a higher volume. Also, spend some time at home practicing playing the kick with your heel. There are certain songs where you will have to simplify the kick drum part because it's gonna be a little bit weird playing fast stuff with your heel, but you will get better at it. Just don't show up at the gig assuming that it's gonna be just fine doing that for the first time. Practice it at home. Um, but you'll get the hang of it. It doesn't take too long. It's really not that hard, especially if you keep things simple and you're not trying to play quick like funk fusion 16th. But also keep volume in mind. Mix yourself carefully with this. And probably the loudest thing on this kit is really gonna be the hi-hats. If you were to splash them loudly or hit them loudly with a stick, that's gonna be the loudest thing you could do, maybe besides a rim shot. But cymbals are always perceived as very loud because they're long tones. So in the same way you need to listen to your whole kit when you're playing, listen to this whole kit. Think about the overall balance and making sure things stay under control. Hey, I hope this video helped you out. It gave you some interesting pointers to maybe help you out in um, developing your stripped down cocktail kit kind of setup. If you're playing a lot of small venues, if you're doing singer songwriter stuff, or you're playing a lot of acoustic music where this is appropriate. Um, I hope this helped to guide you. I hope you're able to build your own cool setup. And if you've already done that, I'd love to see what your setup looks like. Um, so leave a comment below or shoot me an email Send a picture. I'd love to see what kind of um, acoustic setups you guys are using. I'm also always looking for creative ideas to improve my setup and add to it. And so it's always cool finding new ways to change it up. As always, thanks for watching. And if you're new to the non-glamorous drummer, be sure to hit that subscribe button and check out some of the other videos here on the channel. Thanks guys for watching. I will see you next week.